Are you interested in buying a car? Well, you've come to the right place. Introducing you to the Fossil Fuel 2000. This car runs on, you guessed it, fossil fuel. So how do they work? Well, firstly, they need fossil fuels. Fossil fuels consist of hydrocarbons that are derived from natural sources such as minerals or the gradual decomposition of animals and plants. The internal combustion engine in the car works by feeding fuel and air into the combustion chamber via the mechanical movement of the piston, a device that moves up and down in the combustion chamber, compressing the fuel and air. This process initiates combustion, converting the chemical energy to mechanical energy. As the inlet and exhaust open and close, fuel and air is pushed into the chamber and exhaust is released. Wait just a minute there. Why would you drive that piece of rubbish when you could be driving this beautiful, majestic automobile? recklessly burn fossil fuel when you could be using hydrogen instead. The key to using hydrogen as power is the fuel cell. Fuel cells can be used in cars and to provide electricity to rural areas with no power lines. How does it work you are? Well, fuel cells are electrochemical cells producing electricity water and heat through chemical reaction without combustion. The hydrogen fuel cell is a basic example of this process. The cell requires the presence of hydrogen and oxygen gas to produce an electrical current. Consisting of two electrodes, the anode and cathode, the hydrogen fuel cell produces electricity through a constant flow of provided chemicals, hydrogen and oxygen gas. The fuel cell's electrolyte serves the purpose of carrying electrically charged particles to each electrode. An addition of a catalyst to a fuel cell, such as platinum nanoparticles, which is thinly coated on carbon paper or cloth, facilitates the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen, allowing it to run at a higher rate without contributing to any products. If you're looking for something with a bit more power, this is what you want. Tell me, 46095T, how well does your car accelerate? Well, the acceleration is a little more gradual than sudden, mm -hmm. and the range of a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle is quite limited, but... So, you couldn't really go for long road trips now, could you? No. Fossil fuels are easily combustible, so with a little amount of fuel, you get lots of energy. This car can provide you with lots of power! But, no. Yes, but how efficient are fossil fuel cars? Not very. Hydrogen fuel cells are three times more efficient than internal combustion engines. You see, that car over there isn't as efficient due to incomplete combustion. Therefore, you don't get as much out as what you put in. This car is super efficient, meaning that you get the bang for your back. Hydrogen fuel cells aren't all that cheap now, are they? No. Hydrogen fuel cells are costly to manufacture. They require expensive materials such as platinum, which is used as its catalyst. The price of a single hydrogen fuel cell is currently more than $100,000. $100,000! This is why hydrogen fuel cell cars available today are only available for lease and not for sale. How much does your average tank of petrol cost? If you haven't noticed, the price of petrol has increased substantially. The cost per gallon of hydrogen fuel is just $1, whereas the cost per gallon of gasoline is $2.32. Lots. Hydrogen as a fuel is actually cheaper. Ha! But where do you plan on refueling that? There are currently no hydrogen refueling stations around. Yes, but there currently are hydrogen refueling stations in California, and with the proper infrastructure of hydrogen refueling stations, which could soon be incorporated into present gas stations, fueling wouldn't be such a problem. We just need a little time to... Yeah, but at the moment, there is nowhere for you to refuel, is there? No. Additionally, fossil fuels are much more stable and safe. Just a bunch of carbon and hydrogen atoms, really. This makes transportation and storage of fossil fuel easy. This means that you can fuel up anywhere because fossil fuel is so readily available. You can even shop around for the best price. Hydrogen fuel, on the other hand, is highly reactive and highly flammable. You know what that means. So you wouldn't say that it's really that safe now, would you? No. And might I just add that hydrogen fuel isn't that easy to extract now, is it? No. In fact, it doesn't quite live up to its promise of being so great for the environment. At the moment, 95% of hydrogen used today is a result of steam reforming. Steam reforming is the industrial process of producing hydrogen gas with fossil fuels as its source. Steam, as H2O, reacts with, for example, methane in an endothermic reaction, and then, in order to produce hydrogen, a water gas shift reaction occurs where carbon monoxide is oxidised to carbon dioxide. Both gases contribute to greenhouse gas emissions.
Yes, but uh, technology and science in this field is still evolving. There are other ways we can extract hydrogen from water, such as electrolysis, a thermochemical cycle, photobiological water splitting, enzymatic hydrogen generation, silos, and once again, electrolysis. Electrolysis is a method of decomposing water molecules, which separates hydrogen and oxygen by passing an electric current through them. Although hydrogen gas produced from electrolysis is significantly inefficient in comparison to hydrogen gas from the production of coal or natural gas methods, such as steam reforming. This is because a significant amount of energy is required to electrolyze, thus providing minimal hydrogen gas as a result. Yes, but fossil fuels have been mined for centuries. We know how to do it, and it's easy and cheap. Fossil fuels are extremely abundant and it's easy to extract. All you gotta do is dig it out of the ground. Just a minute there, hold on, excuse me, but fossil fuel isn't abundant at all. In the middle of a global energy crisis, oil, natural gas and coal together provide 86% of the world's energy source. However, as the global population is increasing rapidly, the energy demand is growing fast. Fossil fuels are non-renewable and we are running out of them fast. This figure shows the gradual decrease of fossil fuel supply after its exponential increase from the 1900s than an overall decrease from 2025 to 2300. It is visible that crude oil energy and natural gas reserves will begin to deplete from approximately 2000 with coal energy beginning to deplete at approximately 2060. Unlike fossil fuels, hydrogen is extremely plentiful in source. I mean, there are... Leaders of water in the world. And as a matter of fact, 28% of carbon dioxide emissions come from vehicles, as shown in this figure. 61% of which are light duty vehicles, as shown in this figure. But wait, there's more. Burning of coal results in destruction of wide areas, including landscapes, forests, and wildlife habitats at the side of the mine, endangers the lives of many animals. Coal mining is also harmful to the environment as there is an increased risk of chemical contamination of groundwater as well as polluted waterways as rain washes loose from topsoil into streams. Not only are we running out of fossil fuels, but the combustion of fossil fuels are extremely harmful to the environment in terms of mining processes as well as the contribution of greenhouse gas emissions that contribute to global warming. Hydrogen fuel cells on the other hand have no emissions and are much better for the environment. And the accumulation of greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane, which is contributing to the greenhouse effect. As you can see in this figure, as the carbon dioxide concentration has increased since 1880 and 2000, so has the global temperature. The greenhouse effect is the process of when greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide are naturally present in the atmosphere, maintaining the Earth's relative temperature as it absorbs the heat from sun rays that have been reflected off Earth. This, in turn, allows Earth to sustain its plant and animal life. Although, with the issue of increasing emissions of greenhouse gases as a result of fossil fuel burning, factory manufacturing, land clearing and agriculture, the enhanced greenhouse effect occurs, when more heat is being absorbed by these gases and less is being reflected back into space. Thus, the Earth's temperature increases, threatening some ecosystems. Combustion of fossil fuels emits a number of harmful gases, just sulfur dioxide, which is contributing to acid rain. This is causing the pattern of the world's weather to change. This figure shows an increase of extreme weather events since 1980, such as heat waves, floods, droughts, and storms. Confused about which car to buy? Let's make a final comparison. Extracting fossil fuels and the production of hydrogen are both very harmful to the environment. As mining destructs the environment and hydrogen production currently requires fossil fuel, which produce greenhouse gases. In conclusion, hydrogen fuel cell technology is still developing with improved refueling infrastructure and availability, lower cost and environmentally friendly production methods such as using renewable energy to power the steam reforming process, hydrogen fuel cell cars will be much more beneficial to the environment and the Earth's future. However, it is unfortunate that hydrogen fuel cell technology is yet to improve and that fossil fuels are still being relied on as our primary source of energy as it is extremely harmful to the environment. The high cost of hydrogen fuel cell development today is insignificant to the price that we'll have to pay for our impact on the earth and environment in the future. Although the positives of hydrogen fuel cell cars outweigh the negatives in terms of the earth's future, realistically hydrogen fuel cell cars require time to develop and probably wouldn't be purchased unless marketed at an equal or lower price to the cars that run on fossil fuels.